Welcome to my third video looking at the reasons to believe God exists in a series produced by Ravi Zacharias Ministries. The first two were entirely unimpressive, but can we get some mileage out of this one? Looking at the parable of the stone that is too big for God to lift. Or is it going to be just as mindless as everything else that seems to come out of the mouths of the apologists? I have my suspicions, but let's take a look at the parable of the stone. The paradox of the stone is, is, is set forth as if it's a philosophical argument that basically, I think, just um, misunderstands the nature of the terms. If God is the greatest power of all, the highest of which nothing else greater can exist, then by definition, he is that. So there can be no stone big enough that he couldn't lift because that would be a contradiction. So it's to set up, really, a false contradiction. The problem is, it's you who doesn't understand your own terms. The paradox of the stone really exists to show just how contradictory the characteristics that Christians assign to their own God actually are. If God actually is the most powerful being that can possibly exist, as the term omnipotence actually implies, then God ought to be able to lift any stone, anywhere, at any time, with no problem whatsoever. However, if you combine this with the idea that God can do anything, then God ought to be able to create any kind of stone that you can imagine. And I can certainly imagine one that's too heavy for God to possibly lift. So Christians are really left with a problem that the situation that they themselves have set up is self-contradictory. You cannot have a being that can do anything without limit suddenly have limits on what he can do. If that's the case, then your own definitions and your own characteristics, those are the problem. The paradox of the stone is actually a very old argument against God's existence. It comes from the medieval period when they were trying to understand what does omnipotence mean. Richard Swinburne, for example, a contemporary Christian philosopher, um, has defined omnipotence as God being able to do all things that are congruent with God's character, with God's nature. So God can't do something illogical. God can't do something that doesn't co cohere with God's nature. That's what omnipotence means. So that argument is really not an argument at all because it's really about understanding how omnipotence is defined. It isn't an argument against God's existence. It's an argument against God's characteristics. There are lots of supposed gods out there that do not share these omni-characteristics and are not, therefore, logically inconsistent. But that's really the problem that we have here. You didn't go out and study God in his natural habitat to find out what God is really like. You can't do that. You can't even prove that God is real. Therefore, you just made up a bunch of stuff that personally appealed to you and declared that's how God has to be. That's utterly ridiculous. It's no different from declaring that this is how Bigfoot is, or this is how the Loch Ness Monster is, or this is how space aliens are. It's fine if you're working in fiction and inventing characters, but you people want us to believe that God is actually real. Trying to play word games to prop up the ridiculous nature of your beliefs doesn't help either. How do you know what God's character actually is? How do you know what God's nature actually is? Just tacking on random words at the end of your arguments doesn't actually help your case. How do you know that God can't do something illogical? The Bible is full of God doing lots of illogical things. You know, those things called miracles? I guess words only mean things when it's convenient. It's supposed to show that uh, there are contradictions in the attributes of um, of God that you really, it doesn't really make sense to believe in a being who is all powerful. But that's a misunderstanding of what um, omnipotence means or even how logic works. That's, that's, it's like asking, can we have, um, what happens if you have a, an irresistible force, an, an immovable object when, they, when the two come together? Well, if you have one, you can have the other. So that, that's not, never going to happen. It's, it's, it's a logical contradiction. But that's not, not a limitation on God. It's, it's just how logic works. So I guess all-powerful doesn't actually mean all-powerful. We're back to playing word games. I guess all-powerful is now only mostly powerful when being all-powerful gets in the way of reality. And the whole point of the irresistible force and the immovable object is that they cannot coexist, just like God's supposed characteristics cannot coexist. But you people insist that they do. You just redefine them 
when they become problematic to your belief system. Clearly, you have no clue how logic actually works, or you'd be rolling your own eyes right now at your own absurdity. It's a, a philosophical game that does not respond to the actual data of what the Bible says about God himself as being above and beyond anything that exists or ever have, has existed. In fact, the source of all existing things. So there is no stone, there's no power, and God will not do in the universe that which is logically contradictory. He couldn't create a stone that he couldn't lift. It's just, uh, it's an impossibility. And so it's really a nonsensical question. It sounds good in a bar, but it actually does not describe any really existing things. And what difference does what the Bible says actually make? We're not talking about your farcical fantasy book. You are claiming that this God thing actually exists in factual reality. Therefore, what your big book of multiple choice says about God means about as little as what the claims of ancient books of mythology say about dragons and monsters. You haven't demonstrated that what's in the Bible is actually true. You haven't shown that the people who wrote the Bible had any means of actually discovering the information accurately. You haven't proven that these unjustified and unsubstantiated claims have ever been tested in the real world to see if they're actually so. Arguing about the characteristics of unicorns and leprechauns is no more realistic than arguing about the characteristics of an unproven god. You haven't proven any of these things actually exist. You haven't shown that these characteristics are accurately representative of the real thing. Until you can do that, you're just making fools of yourself. And God does do all kinds of things that are logically contradictory in the Bible. The aforementioned miracles, which are a violation of the way things operate in the real world, for example. None of this religious nonsense even sounds good in a bar. I guess you'd have to be a little bit off your rocker to believe that this kind of ad hoc rationalization that you people are infamous for makes any sense at all. You know, the more I listen to these people, and it's always the same people in these Robbie Zacharias videos, the more I think there's something seriously wrong with them. Nobody can be this gullible. You could make the exact same kind of arguments for invisible magic ponies and have them make just as much sense. How they cannot see this is entirely beyond me. That's why things like the flying spaghetti monster were invented, to show these people just how ludicrous their claims are, how they can be applied to obviously made-up creatures and sound absolutely identical to the claims made about their gods. Yet, they just don't get it. There is no difference between gods and Voldemort. In another 2,000 years, are we going to have a Harry Potter cult running around praising he who cannot be named? With the current level of human religious stupidity, I unfortunately wouldn't be surprised. But that's a topic for another video, isn't it? Anyhow, thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, and share. Leave comments and suggestions below. And by all means, think. Blind belief is for suckers and fools, and we already have way too many of those running around.